My name is Pratika Polisar. I'm a Lamont research professor at the Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory of Columbia University. And I'm a geologist and organic geochemist who uses the molecular record of life that's preserved in rocks to understand um, how life and our environment has changed over Earth history and what that can tell us about uh, our future. The project I'm, I'm most excited about right now is looking at Earth's climate, um, atmospheric carbon dioxide levels, and vegetation over a, a period in Earth's history called the Miocene, about 23 to 5 million years ago. And it may sound like an esoteric time period, a, a distant time period from the present, but it's actually how far back in time you have to go where you reach um, Earth's temperatures that we're likely to face in the coming centuries. And so it's a time period we can use as a, as a laboratory to understand how um, the warming that we are causing on this planet today will affect the distribution of rainfall, the, um, how and where vegetation grows, um, and uh, how that can affect um, fauna and animals living on the landscape. The way I study this time period is through the um, molecular record of life, and these are molecular fossils, so they're molecules that are the remnants of life. The same way you can think of as a shell or a dinosaur bone as the fossils you're familiar with. We think about all that flesh around that dinosaur or the you know meat inside the shell, and that or that meat is, is made of molecules as well. And those molecules also get preserved in sediments. So just like you can look at the hard parts of organisms as the fossils we're used to thinking about, you can look at the soft parts of organisms um, through the techniques and instruments that we have in my lab. Um, and the, the usefulness of this is that if you think about organisms and plants and animals, you know, many don't produce hard parts, don't produce fossils in the way we think about them. And so these molecular fossils are really the only record we have of, of that life in the past. I think what I'd like people to know from this work is that the when we use the geologic record as this laboratory to understand what climate change looks like and what our future might look like, we see really big changes. We see really different, different a different world. We see uh, a world without a Sahara desert, for, for example. We see a world without tropical grasslands. And you know, our, our research would suggest that is potentially the direction we're headed. And that's not something that's gonna happen in the next decade, but over the coming centuries, it will continue on the trajectory, on the path we're on, we're gonna see really big changes and things that matter to us. So, you know, small temperature changes maybe seem a little esoteric, but when you look out your window and the type of vegetation, the type of animals that can grow and live there are completely different, that's a really, th those are the kinds of striking changes we're seeing from our research. I got interested in science uh, because of the reading material in our bathroom. <laughs> My father had a, a long standing sub subscription to Science News. And I was really, you know, loved the uh, chemistry, physics, astronomy, and geology. And so I still remember Rich Richard Monastarsky was the, was the writer for, for Science News who covered geology. I still remember some of the articles from that. And then when I got to college, um, I took a course my first semester with a really amazing uh, scientist, John, John Reed. And he um, ended up being my mentor and a friend later on. And he really opened my eyes to the how geology lets you walk anywhere in the world, look around you, and start to talk about why the place looks like it does, why it looks like it does today, and what happened in the past. What's the story that led to it looking like that today?